Hey kids, welcome back to Dad Lifting. Thanks for stopping by. I just wanted to post a quick video covering the five key factors that helped me lose 30 pounds and get to my leanest physique ever. After that, I'll run through some footage of a week or so ago when I tested my one rep maxes and then show you how much of my strength I was able to maintain when I went from 190 pounds down to around 162 pounds. The results were mixed, but I kept a lot of the strength. That's the spoiler alert. But before we get into before we get into the lifting part, though, let's run through some progress pictures, some statistics, some charts, just to show you know how much progress I made and, and how I went about it. So about a year ago, around this time, I decided that I would do an on-purpose bulk. The plan was to start at 175, 176 pounds, and go up to 190 pounds by adding one pound of body weight per week. So the bulk was very calculated, very slow and steady. So I started in November, I did reach 190 pounds probably mid to late February. At that point, I tested my one rep maxes in the squat, bench, and deadlift, and I was at my strongest ever. I had added quite a bit of muscle and strength. So I hit 275 pounds on the bench, I hit 425 pounds on the deadlift, 350 pounds on the squat. These were all personal records that still stand today. After I did that, I decided to start the cutting process and the cut also had an end goal in mind the goal was to get back to 175 pounds and then i would at that point assess whether or not i was i, I was stronger at 175 pounds then and so that's the goal the goal was to bulk up and then to cut down and then end up with more muscle mass than when i started i was able to do that i got down to 175 pounds and i looked i took some progress pictures and things were going pretty easy cut had been pretty simple and easy at that point. It didn't feel like it was too challenging and it felt like I could keep going. So I wasn't satisfied with the progress pictures. I wasn't satisfied with how lean I was. So I decided, hey, let's see, let's keep going. Let's push this, see how, how long, how if we can add in a little bit more cardio, if we keep reducing the calories, how far can we go? So another two or three months of cutting and I reached 161, 162 pounds, which is where I sit today. My leanest physique ever. I feel really good about it. I have abs like I've never had before, I have veins in places I've never had before, and then I tested my one rep maxes and all these lifts, and I had maintained quite a bit of strength, so I'm pretty happy with how all of that went. Here's a chart of the weight, you can see, as discussed, I started around 176 pounds, moved up to around 190 pounds, and then went down, stagnated a little bit around the 170s range, and then I decided, hey, I'll take it down some more, and I went down to 162 pounds. So here's some other numbers that show you know, the amount of lean body mass I lost and started with the level of body fat percentage, which is down around 8.5% at this point, down from a peak of 16%. So things, statistics, data all shows that I've gotten quite a bit leaner. How did I get so lean? How was it that this time it worked and other times it didn't? And, it, and that at 39 years old, I was able to achieve a physique I had not ever been able to achieve before. Well, it, well the strategy was simple, but it required consistency, it required discipline. So it was simple, but it wasn't easy. And I think one of the key factors to start out with, before I get into the, the, real, the five key factors that are, uh, this video is about, was an overarching point of you need to have a goal. And the plan to achieve that goal centered around these five things. Factor number one, lift heavy weights four times a week. Focusing on the compound movements, the big ones. Squat, bench, deadlift, full body, four times a week. A lot of strength training programs and power lifting programs offer this type of training, whether it be barbell medicine, Johnny Candido, Juggernaut Systems, any of these programs, probably fine. Just pick a program, stick with it, lift heavy four times a week. That is factor number one. Factor number two in my fitness plan over the last six months was 400 walking lunges each and every single day. So that is just very simple. It's you take 400 walking lunge steps in one direction and you're done or you could take 200 in one direction, come back with another 200. It's just however you wanna get 400 walking lunges in a single day. Sometimes it's back and forth across the backyard. Sometimes it's even six at a time, back and forth in the gym if it's raining and I'm lazy and I don't wanna go outside. Or it's um, on a field where I've got some squishier ground and I do, you know, and, and it feels better on my knees so they're not bumping the ground. Anyway, the idea came from Corey Gregory, I think his name is. I only know him as Corey G from Instagram. But the idea is that it, it, it's a low impact, quick, it only takes 15 minutes or so. Maybe sometimes it's even 10 minutes if you're really quick. But the idea is that it, it replaces your cardio, your need for daily cardio, 
gets the um, some extra hypertrophy in your legs and it's just good for you so that's what I've done I'm on a streak of 125 days in a row of lunging I took a break when I had knee surgery actually for about 10 days but I got right back into it and so that's been a real key and a game changer and something I think I'm gonna to continue to try to do maybe not all year but it is uh, definitely a, a, a better thing to do than sort of go jogging every single day or get on a stair stepper for 45 minutes because it's quick it's easy and it's really really effective the number three thing I did in my plan that really helped was that I started out with a goal of 11,000 steps per day and I tried to hit that number almost exactly every day and then I would ramp that up to eventually where today I'm getting 15,000 steps every day. And the goal there is to try to normalize your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, your NEAT levels, so that your calorie restriction is you know, based on the same sort of baseline of activity every day. That was critical and I think it is important to just get out there and move whenever you can. And it's, good. it's easy to let that slip and it's easy to sort of let the reduction in calories result in you moving less and then you don't really burn those calories. You know, you don't get the benefit of the calorie reduction, the calorie restriction. In the wintertime, I plan to utilize this treadmill a little bit more when it gets too cold to walk, but even you know, in the, in the harshest part of winter, you could put on a bunch of stuff and go walk around the block. Number four is start slow and keep after it. So when I started at the tail end of my bulk, I was just targeting at 2,500 calories per day just to sort of stop adding pounds and I was able to sort of maintain at that level, but I knew I wasn't hitting 2,500 calories per day. So my first step in the cut process was just to track strictly 200, 2,500 calories per day. My maintenance, whatever I thought my maintenance was, if I just tracked it more strictly, I figured I would be able to sort of start the cut process. And that worked for actually a few weeks, I was able to, to drop weight. I'm trying to focus in on one pound per body weight of losses per week, I would just continue to sort of ratchet down the calories whenever my weight stagnated week over week. This was kind of a trial and error process. So I would stick with a calorie level. If it continued to work, I would just stick with that number. And then when it, I started to sort of see a stall out over the course of seven days, I would reduce calories. Over the course of several months now, I worked my daily calories down to what I hope will be 1,700 calories per day over the next week. It took a long time to get here. I stuck with it. I was steady. I was slow. I wasn't perfect. You know, there were times when I definitely binged and went over, but there were other times when I, I got into a real groove and I would hit the calories pretty consistently. But now that I'm at this very low level of like 1,700 calories, I'm having to implement some of the tricks of the trade, right? So you're having to do intermittent fasting, you're eating, you're drinking a lot of sort of like sparkling water, a lot of diet soda. You're eating things with no calories like pickles, you know, whatever it takes to sort of fill up your body um, is, is what you have to do when you get to, sort of to the tail end of it. But just start with something, trial and error, be consistent, be patient. Tip number five I will talk about from my pantry. So that tip is to eat low calorie dense foods. So in addition to hitting the correct number of calories, it's important that those calories you do consume will fill you up. And so I've really gotten into, and I'm not sure I'm not alone, I'm sure almost everyone on YouTube is into these things now, but these anabolic recipes. So making smart choices and subbing out things that are lower calorie dense, but fill your, your stomach up and have more fiber. Things that you learn from watching Greg Doucette's, Doucette's channel or making recipes that Remington James Fitness has or the Iron Musket, doing things like protein ice cream, cheesecakes, pumpkin, a lot of pumpkin based dishes, you know, using, you know, things like xanthan gum I've got here. I've got some guar gum over, over here. I've got, you know, a lot of Splenda, things like that, that have no calories, but fill you up or provide you some satiety that you otherwise would, would be craving. And so they helps you car curb cravings. You've got, you know, things like, what is this? Coconut flour with extra fiber in it. So things that will just keep your belly full and keep you feeling fuller longer and reduce your urges to binge. So that's been a real key and a game changer, especially things like protein ice cream. I make protein ice cream each and every day almost. And then just for fun, just to make these other things, it, it has been fun in the pandemic just to have something to do, to make a muffin, to make, you know, protein waffles or protein pancakes or anabolic French toast, whatever. So highly encourage you to check out those videos. There's a lot of creativity going on on YouTube when it comes to anabolic 
anabolic recipes. Not traveling and having a super consistent schedule in the pandemic has also certainly helped. So to the extent that you can do that with your own life, you know, if you can manage to have things go similarly every day and get into a real routine, that helps. Another, another thing people would tell you is to avoid having tons of things like I have. As a, as a father of three, I've got a bunch of snack food. I've got a bunch of candy in my pantry. Don't do that. Don't have a bunch of ice cream just sitting around. Don't have it make it so easy to cheat on your diet. But somehow I've been able to, to, to make it through even with all the, the treats around. So the final thing I wanna leave you with before we get onto the lifting footage is that if I can do it as a 39 year old man with, a, with three kids, with all this food in the house that's related to them, with a wife who eats junk and ice cream and eats out all the time, if I can do it, then you probably can do it too. If you're watching this video, you probably have access to weights, you probably have access to high quality foods, things like that. Just get out there and do it, make a plan, stick to it, avoid the crap, and yeah, see where you can go. Let me know what you, how, how it goes. You know, follow me on Instagram, like and subscribe to this channel. I would love to, to know how you're, how you're doing and, and if any of these tips helped you or if you had success with other tips or other factors in your plan, just would love to engage with anyone out there about fitness. So that's it, on to footage of me from my one rep max testing day from a couple weeks ago. And if I don't, if you don't stick around for that and if I don't talk to you, thanks for stopping by, keep it on the DL. Hey everybody, so here I am in the gym. I've never ever taken pre-workout straight to the dome with the scooper. So we'll try that now, I'm sure it's gonna be disgusting. Uh, here's an entire scoop, I'm gonna stick it in my mouth and wash it down with water. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, that's gross. Oh. No, thank you. Holy shit.